from the Eco Action with Rachel Rackaban. I have an awesome guest, as usual, and her name is Dr. Elisa Beck. She is a neurodevelopmental optometrist, and she is also the head of the Turtle Creek and the Airshed and the Watershed Association that we were just not now starting. Not an association, but a, a initiative. Initiative, <laughs> I'm sorry. And then she is also the head of Sustainable Monroeville. Thanks for coming on the show, Elisa. Thank you. I see her at all the environmental events. I'm like, Elisa, Elisa. Okay, so we have to start out. It's <laughs> Alyssa. It's Alyssa. 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 It's well, really why is it that I'm always calling you Elisa? Because it's spelled E-L-I-S-A, right. but it's not pronounced that way. But you know, I have a friend, and her name is Alicia, and she is from Russia, and everybody just calls her L. But anyway. Well, my father was born in Russia. Yeah, so, so but you pronounce it. Alyssa. 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 Okay, so yours is a little bit different. But anyway, so yeah, I'm happy to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and so I want to talk a little bit about each one of these initiatives that you've got going on. So let's first talk about Sustainable Monroeville. And how is it that you transitioned from being a doctor of optometrist? Let's start there. Doctor of optometrist to environmental activist, and yeah. well, <laughs> so from the time I was real little, I always loved running through the woods with my basset hound, uh -huh. Maxwell, and I've I've just been always oriented towards nature, and so um, fast forward to my undergrad degree, that was in ecology biology, and then I went on to optometry school, mm -hmm. which is a four-year degree after undergrad. Mm -hmm. And I became a neurodevelopmental optometrist working with children and adults on the ADD to autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. So how do people improve their vision naturally? Um, you know, how do you work within the context of autism and the gifts of autism? Um, so I've, I've always kind of worked in an area that's been maybe not necessarily mainstream. Mm -hmm. and, and so my activist nature through um, optometry actually has kind of reformed more recently into, um, well, it was 10 years ago I founded Sustainable Monroeville. I got real frustrated. I was talking to Matt Mahalik, who's now, mm -hmm. I believe, of the Breathe Project. He's been on the show, yeah. He's great. Um, uh, and he, I, I told him, you know, I said, I kept going to council and, 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 er, and complaining. He said, well, why don't you form a citizens group? which we did 10 years ago. And so we've met monthly at the Monroeville Public Library for the past 10 years, generally the first Monday night of the month. Um, and we show films that are environmentally related. Mm -hmm. We talk about plant-based nutrition to save the planet. Um, we work on local initiatives. Mm -hmm. um, most recently, we're, we've been working to uh, facilitate putting a protective of the citizens oil and gas ordinance in into law in the municipality of Monroeville. Mm -hmm. So we encourage everybody who's watching right now, um, you know, whether or not you live in Monroeville, to call the council people in Monroeville, call the mayor, um, mm -hmm. call your friends that you know in Monroeville and let them know that uh, we need a, a protective of the citizens oil and gas ordinance in place that's detailed, right. that has a lot of details. And in, I wanted also to encourage everybody in the whole southwestern Pennsylvania region to go to their municipal government and see what the laws are that are in place because a lot of people don't realize that we have the right to put, we can't say legally whether or not, for example, fracking can happen, mm -hmm. but we're allowed to say where it can happen. Mm -hmm. But if we don't take that opportunity, mm -hmm that it's our right, um, then the industry will be putting their things wherever they want to. Right. So right now in Monroeville, they're planning a frack pad about two miles from our home. And those are several acres. <coughs> which is just over into Westmoreland County. There's a beautiful uh, Westmoreland Heritage Trail. Mm -hmm. um, they want to put a frack pad right, right there, right on, mm -hmm. basically in my view, on top of homes. Um, right you know, and schools, especially uh, in, that, in that area. There's also, um, you know, an injection well in Plum that's, that's been approved. Um, there's another frack pad that they plan to put in uh, Braddock, the old, um, not the old, the currently existing Edgar Thompson works. Right, and that's a lot of chemicals. It's a lot of chemicals. That'll be in the air and in the water 
and affect our development as well as our children. Right, and so then that swings back to my neurodevelopmental op optometry Absolutely. piece and understanding that as the years have gone by, I've been an optometrist since 1987, um, there's, there's more and more children and adults that are affected by the neurotoxicity of these dangerous chemicals that also cause cancer. Heavy metals. And Heavy arsenic metals. Arsenic and uh, all the different chemicals that they use to pump into the ground and then they don't really handle the flow back very well as well. So, yeah. So that brings up the question actually, mm -hmm. is it possible for this industry to be safe? I think the conclusion of most is no, which is why we're advocating at this point to just say no, just say no. Just say no. Like and an anti drug campaign. Just say no. <laughs> just say no. How, this is this is important. <laughs> How do we move beyond addiction? Right. So we have an addicted culture. Right. We're addicted to you just convenience. Plastics. That's what it, that's what we're extracting gas for. Absolutely. So how do you move beyond it? How do you mobilize citizens? And that's what you're trying to do with sustainable Monroeville is to mobilize citizens to contact their senators and their s council members and be activists on their own and find out what the differences are in their regulations versus other areas across Pennsylvania. Well, and so, and, and from the healthcare perspective, mm -hmm. from the health and environment perspective, I think the most important thing at these moments in time is to figure out how to look into yourself and figure out what it is that you're doing mm -hmm. that has created this. And what are you creating as a matriarch or a patriarch of your family? What kind of practices are you recreating um, and repeating within the next generation and encouraging? What are you responsible for? Absolutely. We have been very blessed mm -hmm. in this past century, many of us. Mm -hmm. I know that I certainly have. In my imagination, you certainly have, and probably most of the people watching mm -hmm. right now live um, are pretty blessed. Mm -hmm. um, where did that come from? What are the roots of that? And then how do we kind of move back into ourselves, into our own inner nature, our mm -hmm. own inner ecosystem? How do we clear that out? And do what's right. Well, and how do we eat whole food, plant-based? How do we understand the, the dangers of animal agriculture? That's what your, your master's, it, you have your doctorate in optometry, and then you also have a I, master's. I just recently got a master's in spirituality and live food nutrition. Amazing. And so I've, I've learned, and I, I grew up as a carnivore, omnivore. Mm -hmm. You know, I ate everything. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, you know, not lately, though. <laughs> not lately. <laughs> lately? Okay, so, so true confessions. What have you eaten lately? <laughs> true confessions. <laughs> um, we're going to have an awesome dessert on December 11th, you know, at the Braddock Public Library for the reimagine. Yeah. It's going to be vegan. So December but it's 11th, be that's a Wednesday. And that event, it's a Wednesday. This, this event is through another association that you have started, the Turtle well, Creek, Creek okay. Airshed and Watershed. Mm -hmm. What was the extension okay, of that? Okay, so uh, it, this, the reimagined Turtle Creek Watershed and Airshed mm -hmm. grew out of a couple of things. And mm -hmm. I, I believe that the... Um, cross-sectionality, the interdimensionality, the connection of all different organizations is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. um, just like the mycelium of the fungus Absolutely. on the roots of trees. That's what my published research is on. Okay. On micro-restoration and rebuilding soil aggregates through mycelium. And how do we use that as a model? Yeah, so the, the network underground of the root hair connection through the nutrient cycle. Yes, cycling. yes. Absolutely. So Sustainable Monrovia was an ent is an entity. Mm -hmm. Um, not focusing as much on that anymore. Why? Um, partially out of my frustration that the Monroeville Council has not passed a protective of the citizens' oil and gas ordinance. So now right. we're we're broadening it. And well, so, mm, reimagine Beaver, reimagine so Butler much. is a project of the League of Women Voters. Mm -hmm. And so then I thought, well, let's do reimagine Turtle something Creek. closer into town. Mm -hmm. So reimagine the Turtle Creek watershed and airshed communities. The league is providing us these giant, amazing maps mm -hmm. that we'll have at the center of each table on December 11th. Mm -hmm. I know that when this comes out- Can I get out, a copy of that? Because you know I'm doing research on subwatersheds and hydrofracking and Ab sensitivity. Absolutely. The I event will be filmed. Like copy of that. 
The event will be filmed by Mark Dixon of, of Yurt, oh. your environmental road Love trip Mark Dixon. fame. We're going to have him on the show, too. <laughs> um, <laughs> Got to contact him. We also love, love filmmaker Kersey Jansa of Sustainability Pioneers and every, you know, um, Tara Alexander, amazing filmmaker also who's doing a lot of environmental work. But mm -hmm. so we, we, we're taking that and helping people to visualize the watershed. So mm -hmm. it's, it's western Westmoreland County, it's eastern Allegheny County, but it's also uh, Mike Doyle's District 18, so it includes Pittsburgh. And we're just gonna all go get around tables and vision for an hour. Prior to that, we're gonna have about 10 different groups uh, tabling. Um, uh, as well as food, and as the well event as food. is free. The event is and free. It's on December 11th. That's December 11th. So this is for the live streaming, but and we're then going. And in February, you have another event. Well, we're, we don't have a date set yet, but right. one of the um, film shorts that we're going to show as an introduction on December 11th mm -hmm. is a gentleman who has founded a nonprofit. He was just honored at, with the Heinz Awards. Um, it is called um, Coalfield Development. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that his groups train former coal miners in new ways that contribute to the regenerative economy, mm, such wonderful. as solar and wind. Yeah, and I read about that. And he's planning to come in February. Um, we have to set a date still, but he's going to be there. His name is Brandon Dennison. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea is, how do we meet people where they are? Mm -hmm. And then all of us as a wave move into this regenerative economy, which we have all the answers for right now. Right. It's just our will. All the science, yeah. Our will. Accessibility of sustainable products and understanding where to find them are in so many different places. And having one location where you can access all of the different environmental organizations and understand what they do without having to Google them individually, I think would be a great way to streamline education, as well as uh, the knowledge of those products that are available, like shampoo pods and water pods made from algae, and all of the different solutions that are available, they need to be in one location, and that's something that I'd like to start working on at some point in the near future. But anyhow. Interesting, but how cool will it be as we reimagine these things widely available everywhere mm -hmm. tomorrow, so that when this TV station goes to buy their soap, they buy a biodegradable product rather than what's, excuse me, Carl and everybody, that's in the bathroom that I went into before I came in here. So <laughs> that, that it, that I apologize. God is watching. Um, but, but you see my you see my point. So that it's widely available so we don't necessarily all have to think about it all at once because we don't right now. And whether or not we all will ever is a question that remains. But those of us that are thinking about it, mm -hmm. how does it become widely available? And how do we not tolerate what we have been given, what we see in the grocery stores? Processed, junk, agribusness, chemicals. Mm -hmm. We yeah. just say Should no, like a giant boycott. I'm just right. making this a up as we're speaking. Boycott. I agree, I agree, that's probably the best way to go. But also, there's a problem with cost that's affiliated. So you can buy a salad or you can buy a burger, and the burger can be 99 cents and the salad be 4.99. So there's a cost that's as affiliated with health. Well, so the th it's question is more so, so wait, so wait, to be so, organic. so let's break that down. I don't mm -hmm. agree with you at all. That's okay. So you don't have to. So, <laughs> <laughs> so unless um, you unless you have your own garden. Now, when you oh. grow your own food, which oh. is what I do, okay. uh, then that does work. But that's you know, one a lot alternative. of people are not going to grow their own garden because that's another expenditure of their energy. And that's not necessarily what they want to do. So we're talking about the public at large, mm. uh, not an individual person. So the public at large changing its mind and understanding that eating out in general is more expensive. But if you were to eat low on the food chain and buy your own beans and rice and kale mm -hmm. and prepare it with some mushrooms in there sauteed with you know a little bit of gluten-free soy sauce and um, some umbashi plum vinegar and make this delicious meal uh, it's going to be a lot less expensive than that 99 cent burger 
Right, and that's what I was saying, but a lot of people are not going to change their habits and the ways that they eat. So let's change. So I feel how it is that you can no. get them to change their minds is why we're here um, to talk about that. But also, I do want to talk a little bit more about, um, we talked a little bit about Sustainable Monroeville, the Turtle Creek um, Watershed and Airshed association. Well, Turtle and Creek Watershed and Airshed Communities Visioning. The community yes, uh, yes. visioning uh, association that you have. I'm, I'm not familiar, you know, I'm not really the, getting the exact name of it. There is a Chalfont Watershed Association mm -hmm. that will be there uh, with us. Mm -hmm. um, Chalfont Run is a tributary of Turtle Creek and um, it's where the old Churchill Country Club was. They're rewilding that. And so that's helping a lot of people to change their minds because instead of having a groomed golf course nearby, mm -hmm. they have wild nature. Well, almost 90% of the um, tributaries are primary and secondary headwaters in the state of Pennsylvania. So all of the pollution that we experience are in the headwaters and those are going down into West Virginia, um, sometimes through you know different rivers into you know, Maryland and so forth. So we are, you know, actually the primary polluters of, you know, the southern, the, the center belt of the United States <laughs> when it comes to the eastern portion. And it's really sad, especially all the things that I've been reading even more so lately. Um, but, you know, we're, we're right on top of this Marcellus Shale and the Utica Shale and, Which you know, must be kept in the ground. All of our water yes. is is above that you know so everything that we have is going to be contaminated it's really really sad but anyway so not if we keep it let's talk a little bit more about ground. you let's talk about um <laughs> what you've done in the past and what your intentions are into the future that's what i want to know so far so we've talked about sustainable monroeville you've been doing that activism for the past 10 years what about in the future what do you have planned uh, as far as activism and mobilization is so, so when it comes to the nutrition, you have an interest in hydro obviously hydraulic fracturing, nutrition, and um, spirituality. So I think that um, as I move forward in my life, mm -hmm. I'm interested in living as vitally as possible for myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've had to convince myself that that's not selfish because I think as a woman growing up in the 60s and 70s, even in the Washington DC area where I grew up, um, I think that women, the elders, kind of modeled um, kind of behaving ourselves. And I think that at this point, we all need to become the multi-dimensional beings that we have the potential for. So we need to protest. We need to say, keep the Marcellus in the ground now, not tomorrow. This is not a transition fuel. We also need to experience nature and our inner natures. So I went recently and just got this year, 2019, a master's degree in spirituality and live food nutrition. Uh, about eight years ago, I dove into the raw living foods lifestyle. And I, it was kind of by mistake but I found at a place called the Hippocrates Health Institute for three weeks, where they gave you green juices and uh, there was like a lot of cleansing, fasting, um, exercise, mm -hmm. uh, you know, bicycling all around the place, that your brain wakes up and your body and your connections with people becomes different when you feed yourself living sprouted things. We are alive, we mm -hmm. are living. When we feed ourselves processed um, and, and you know, flesh, I, hate, you know, I, don't, I don't know what everybody who's watching eats or doesn't eat and I'm not judging that, but what I'm saying is that the Amazon is burning now because we're clearing land for cattle to make burgers. To yes. make burgers that are subsidized, you mm -hmm. know, basically because the petrochemical industry is subsidized. So right. how do we become the multidimensional beings that we have the potential for, that we were all born with, or at least most of us were born so with, we make better choices. before we were um, hypnotized mm -hmm. into the matrix? 
-hmm. How do we step out of the matrix now and have the intestinal fortitude, the will to change our minds? What does that take? And so for me now, it's about what I'm, what I'm eating, what I'm putting on my plate. And it does take longer to prepare food. Mm -hmm. I juice every morning, you know, right. celery, cucumbers, uh, fresh ginger and turmeric and mm -hmm. a couple other things maybe sometimes. I change it up. Um, you know, I take different herbs. I don't take any drugs. I don't drink. I'm high on life. My husband, sorry, <laughs> he says, that's so 70s. Yeah, I grew up in the 70s. <laughs> okay, you know. We've only got a couple more minutes left. Okay. So I want to know how it is that people can get in touch with these organizations and with you. So um, there's a lot of Facebook pages. There's, mm -hmm. there's Vegan Spirituality Southwest PA. Um, there's the larger Vegan Spirituality. There's, there's the Pittsburgh Vegan Society. There's Vegan Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Vegans, the Pittsburgh Vegan Expo. These things are really important with vibrant, fun people and recipes. There's the pl Plant-Based Eating Hub, Sally Lipsky. There is, um, you know, and then there's all the environmental groups that are traditionally environmental. I've been working on the intersectionality of how to make sure that we, as environmentalists, eat lower on the food chain. There's been a big mm -hmm. disconnect. There's Marin's Sustainability Salons. There is um, Grow Pittsburgh. All these groups, many of them they're will. They're all available. They're all available. And how do people you email you or find you? They can email to Sustainable Monroeville at Gmail. Okay. Um, they can look at the Facebook page for Sustainable Monroeville and message through there. Um, there's the Transition Pittsburgh Facebook page, From Peak Oil to Resilience, How Do We Reinvent Culture, Local Community, Local Economy, um, just exciting, exciting positive things. Absolutely. Well, we really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you for inviting me. Very, very um, motivational in a different kind of way, you know, and we appreciate that, the, the spiritual aspect of environmentalism and we haven't seen that to date so we do appreciate well it. I'm writing a book on the subject enlivening consciousness so stay tuned in 2020 awesome. <laughs> wonderful thank you thank you thanks <laughs>sharpen your video editing skills by using adobe premiere pro pc tv 21 offers a summer introduction course on the fundamental editing techniques needed to begin your adobe journey choose from both microsoft and apple products while taking advantage of the up-to-date adobe software boost your resume and feel confident for your next movie making project
Interested in learning about what the filming process is like outside of a formal television studio? PCTV offers an electronic field production workshop where you can learn the ins and outs of filming in field events such as documentaries, concerts, interviews, news, sports, and much more. Electronic field production crews range from a single camera operator to crew of two to a multi-camera setup. Contact PCTV today to learn more about this exciting opportunity. What do the movies Happy Feet, Napoleon Dynamite, X-Men, 500 Days of Summer, and 300 all have in common? They were all edited using Final Cut Pro. And hey, you can do it too! Come on down to PCTV at 1300 Western Avenue for a Final Cut workshop. PCTV 21. Make your mark.